Hey everybody, Mary and the Inappropriate Artist here, sipping my coffee, uh, working on a sketch that I'm going to be painting later today. But today's video is a miniature. I recently visited, oh gosh, I'm not finishing my words. I recently visited Paternalis Falls in Paternalis State Park uh, in Texas. And I put a video out on Sunday of that. So you can go back and look at that if you like. The image that I grabbed from one of those videos is the one that I'm painting from today. So in this video <laughs> that I shot yesterday. <laughs> um, but yeah, so it's a little two and a quarter by four inch. And I've done it on Arches Cold Press watercolor paper and uh, I did paint edge to edge because when they're this tiny I like to give them they can be floated you know I like them they're like almost business card size so but this is a big landscape for me to capture on such a tiny little piece of paper as you'll see so I hope you enjoy the video if you do give it a thumbs up and if you haven't subscribed uh, you can do so below as well. That would be awesome. Both those things really help my channel. The thumbs up helps put me in that algorithm, you know, get me toward the top of that algorithm. And uh, the subscriptions help because eventually once I get to a thousand subscribers, I can do a whole lot of stuff that I can't do now. So uh, let's see what else. Oh, yeah. If um, you'd like to contribute to the journey, that's a really important part of this. You can go to my Instagram and go through all of my paintings. I always post my most recent work and um, I mark them sold when they're sold so you know what's available and what isn't. Uh, photographs are also available, although I don't sell those that often, but I am uh, more and more um, opening myself up to that. Um, so if you go over to my Instagram, you can do that. And uh, that would be awesome. You can also become a member on Patreon. And that's a monthly, which is cool. And then um, you can do a PayPal or Ko-Fi is a new thing I'm doing, which is, um, it's like, buy me a cup of coffee. So it's $3 or something like that. But um, really cool. I haven't had much response there yet because I only just started it so maybe go check it out it'd be pretty neat so the link is below all right everybody I hope you enjoyed today's video pattern Alice Falls it's gouache on arches watercolor paper and I've pretty much done it with two brushes one was a silver black velvet and the other is I think it's a grumbacher anyway just a simple flat hard brush that I needed for scrubbing and for creating hard lines. So have fun. I hope you enjoy it. I'll see you in the end of the video. Starting with the image in the upper left corner, I pulled that image from the video that I had shot for last Sunday. And as you can see, I forgot to start the camera. I did get the sky accomplished and the horizon line of the hills in the distance. What you see me doing now is filling in all of the little planes that I drew in with my pencil. These planes indicate different levels of the landscape as the hills slowly come down into a valley in front of me where these falls reside. I really fell in love with this tree next to the falls. It really felt <laughs> like it was calling to me. Unfortunately, the other side of the falls is private property, and there's a very large sign that indicates it, so there's no crossing over to go hug that tree, so I had to paint it instead. 
As you can tell when I work on these miniatures, every single motion I make is minuscule for sure. Uh, I wet the area only that I am working on when I am doing work like this. As you can see there, this is where I'm going to start adding in the water. And you can see beneath the water there are the stones. So really what you're seeing is the stone through the water. The blue is only there to indicate shadow and where the cracks and rocks are. There's really, as you can see, no sky reflection in that water. And I'll turn the paper any which way I can to get the pigment to move how I want it to move. I am working in very thin layers. And as you can see, that is just a wet brush that I am using to blend my edges. When I'm working this small, as with anything really, it's really all about water control, right? So almost every single movement I make, I am either re-wetting my brush and drying it off, adding the tiniest amount of pigment just to the tip of that brush. As you can see, I've done an awful lot with just this one brush. I can accomplish almost an entire painting with that. I've done entire paintings with that and its sister, the flat brush of the same size. some permanent white for my splash of the wall, water down the falls, and adding in again more shadow. And with gouache, you know, the whole thing is that the darks dry lighter and the lights dry darker. So as it dries, I have to drop in a little bit more pigment. Beautiful thing about the this Arches paper is I can also easily remove pigment, as you'll see here. I take this flat, scrubby brush that I have, and I move in really short, just like I said, scrubby motions. And with the pigment that I pull off that area, I, as you see, can then take it and move it around. I decided that I really liked the way that dry brush effect was creating the texture on the rocks. It really is wonderful, the end of the painting, to pull in that dry brush and really get some texture in there. And now you'll see I'm going to start working on these rocks now that I have more of a plane to work with. And you'll see I, I generally do move from back to front. Although in this I was waiting for um, areas to dry before I went into them again because of the way that I am layering my pigment. I wanted it to be something that wouldn't be disturbed. So I tend to just work on another tiny area of the painting while I'm waiting for another area to dry. Now here, I really laid on this permanent white pretty thick. That is fresh out of the tube. Very little water, if any, added at all. That brush is sticky and leaving almost globs of paint on the paper, which I love. But because it's cold press, it's really just going over the top of that textured paper, which is really neat. And now it's time to add the tree details. Got to bring that tree forward. I also needed to be able to figure out what my background was going to become once I added the trunk. can see here where I am defining my perspective using shadow color and then the white in order to make more of a dramatic pop in that area where the rock is exposed between water's edge 
and then the cliff side. This painting in total took me about an hour just because it is two and a quarter inches by four inches does not mean it happens any faster than a painting that is four by six. Which is why, you know, it's always hard that I have to price them by size rather than how long they take me. But in the end, it does balance out because not every painting takes me this long. This particular piece had lots of layers and lots of, as you can see, tiny little areas that needed to be just touched and then wait for the pigment to change as it dries before you know where to go again. dried and then I decided I needed to add more shadow and depth. So there it is, the finished painting. Thanks for joining me today everyone. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Take care. Bye-bye.